Hello students, welcome to Kasam Academy. Today we are going to learn about mode of action of insecticides. So today we are going to learn the mode of action of organophosphate and carbamate insecticides and what is the difference. These both organophosphates and carbamate insecticides are acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. So in order to know the mode of action of these insecticides, we need to know first the function of acetylcholine in the insect nervous system. So the acetylcholine is nothing but it is a neurotransmitter or a messenger which conveys the message from one neuron to the other neuron. We all know the insect nervous system. We all know the insect nervous system consists of several neurons which are connected in the form of a chain and each neuron will have the soma or cell body, the axon and the terminal arborations. These terminal arborations will be again connected to the other neuron here. So, what is the function of this acetylcholine? Acetylcholine is nothing but it is a messenger or neurotransmitter which conveys the message from the brain of the insect to the body parts or muscles. That means it may be legs, wings or any other body part of the insect. So, now we know the function of acetylcholine that it is a messenger and how it functions in the nervous system. So, what it will do? See, you, here you can see this is the one neuron and this is the other neuron and here there is a gap. The, this gap between two neurons is called as synapse. So, this is the synaptic gap. So, how the message will be conveyed from one neuron to other neuron means, so here this neuron will release the acetylcholine messengers and the other neuron which is adjacent to the neuron will have the receptor sites for this acetylcholine to bind here. So it will have the receptor sites for the acetylcholine to bind. So when the acetylcholine of one neuron will go and bind to the receptor of the other neuron, the message will be conveyed. So when the acetylcholine sits here, the message will be conveyed from this neuron to the other neuron. So message conveying is completed. So after the conveying of the message, there is no need of the acetylcholine because the function of the acetylcholine is completed. It has conveyed message from one neuron to the other neuron and its function is completed. And there is no use of acetylcholine now. After the function is completed, there is no need of this acetylcholine here. So here comes into the action that is this enzyme acetylcholinesterase. So what this enzyme will do? This enzyme will break this acetylcholine to acetate and choline. So there is no use of acetylcholine after conveying of the message. Here comes the acetylcholinesterase enzyme. And what it will do? It will break acetate and choline. So why, we should, why, what is the need to break acetylcholine to acetate into choline? Means if you are not breaking the acetate choline here, there will be the continuous accumulation of messages here. There will be continuous accumulation of messages in the other neuron and the insect will die due to continuous accumulation of messages. That's why in natural process, there is an enzyme called as acetylcholinesterase in the insect body which will break the acetate choline into acetate and choline after conveying of message. So, this is the natural process how the message will be conveyed in the insect nervous system. So, now we need to know the function of these acetate or these insecticides that is organophosphates and carbamates. What the insecticides will do? So these organophosphates and carbamates are the this acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. We call them as acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. Why? Because these two insecticides will inhibit the activity of the enzyme called as acetylcholinesterase. What they will do? They will not allow the acetylcholinesterase. 
acetylcholinesterase to act on the acetylcholine and break acetylcholine molecule. So what happens? This enzyme activity is degraded by the insecticides. So what will happen? There will be continuous accumulation of messages or signals in the other neuron. Continuous accumulation of acetylcholine in the other neuron. So what will happen due to the continuous accumulation of acetylcholine? The insect will die due to paralysis. So this is the general function of acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. And there is also the other thing. There is also a difference in the mode of action between these two insecticides. That is organophosphate and carbamates. We call mode of action of organophosphate insecticide as irreversible action. And we call mode of action of carbamate insecticide as reversible action. So why? We need to know that also. So here you can see this is the enzyme acetylcholinesterase. This is the enzyme acetylcholinesterase. And this is the natural acetylcholine which will bind to the receptor of this acetylcholinesterase. After binding, what will happen? This acetylcholine will break into acetate and choline and both will get disintegrated. So, the both will get disintegrated after binding to the acetylcholine enzyme. And this enzyme will be free to bind to the other molecule of the acetylcholine. And here, suppose these organophosphate insecticides, these will also will have the similar shape of acetylcholine. Organophosphate insecticides also will have similar shape of acetylcholine. And now, if we spray a crop with, or if we spray a crop with organophosphate insecticide, this, uh, when the insect consumes this insecticide, what happens? This organophosphate molecule will go and sit in this acetylcholinesterase inhibitor, this organophosphate molecule will go and sit in acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. And what will happen means, now a part of the molecule will disintegrate and other part will permanently bind to the receptor. So what happens if the other part is bound to the receptor? It will not allow the natural acetylcholine to bind here. So as a result, what will happen? Accumulation of natural acetylcholine messengers will be there on the receptor of other neuron and insect will die. So this is the mode of action of organophosphate insecticide. So coming to the carbamate. So in case of carbamates, what will happen means, here this is the receptor, acetylcholinesterase receptor and this is the molecule of carbamate insecticide. So what will happen after binding to the acetylcholinesterase receptor, a part will move away or disintegrate. A part of the insecticide will get disintegrated initially. Later what will happen? After some time, the other part of the insecticide also will get disintegrated. So again this receptor, acetylcholinesterase receptor is free to bind. It is free to bind. So now, we, are, we have sprayed the crop with carbamate insecticide and insect have consumed. So what will happen? Here this acetylcholinesterase receptor is free to bind. So here it can bind natural acetylcholine or it can also bind the carbamate insecticide because both have the similar shape. That's why we call this carbamate insecticide mode of action as competitive inhibition. As because it is having competition between natural acetylcholine and also the carbamate molecule. Anything can bind. They are competing for binding to this receptor. So if the natural acetylcholine binds to this acetylcholinesterase receptor, it will disintegrate into acetate and choline and it will move away. If carbamate binds for some time, the one part will be disintegrated, the other part will be binding here, allowing the accumulation of the molecules. After some time, it will get released and again the receptor will be open to bind the other molecule. So that's why we are calling carbamate mode of action as competitive inhibition.
inhibition as well as it is reversible action because again the insect can come to the normal stage if natural acetylcholine is binding to the receptor. So that's why the organophosphate insecticides are more toxic when compared to the carbamate insecticide. Thank you.